Special guest, Michael Johnson. This is the Power Motion Picnic Hour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Power Motion Picnic Hour. As always, I'm your host, Dave, and as always, alongside me is Trevor. Oh, Trevor, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing well. Doing quite well. How about yourself, Dave? I'm doing good. It's, geez, it's been it's been like two weeks, and uh, can't believe I remembered my opening lines and remembered to deliver them in the exact same. <laughs> The exact same way I do every episode. It was well, it was a job well done. Um, two weeks, also known as a week in running. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. Around here. Yeah. How do you how do you measure a week in running? Uh, yeah. Which yeah would be was like would be a song from the musical Rent if uh, if that, <laughs> if there was any running in that, but I don't think there's any at all. Yeah, not that I can recall. No, but the East Village has changed a lot <laughs> since the nineties. Oh, sure has yeah. And, uh, if if uh, if they do a, an updated modern revival of rent it'll certainly have a lot more a lot more runners yeah that's true yeah. um especially if they happen to saunter by the uh john v Lindsay east river track that's right i you know i can't believe that didn't make an appearance at all in the original musical rent which i i did see uh, i saw the well i saw the touring production back in i don't know i want to say it was 1997 yeah um little little running we know that much about yeah uh, about rent i remember that was my review at the time good musical could use a little more running <laughs> <laughs> good songs interesting characters relevant themes could use more running <laughs> there was a there was a recent event um where somebody got married and had also recently finished a marathon and i i went up and congratulated the bride on on going sub five um but but no congratulations given for for anything else um just, yeah just the marathon a anybody and just about everybody can get married but uh not everybody runs a sub five marathon sub five was much felt much more like personal too um you know and it's it's not that a sub five marathon is something that is often celebrated in in the sporting press um but when you take it in the context of most people, most people will never run a sub five marathon. No, no. Um, yeah. And actually, there, well, there's there's a lot of mailbag. I'll just say that up. Good front. Lord. Yeah. yeah. This, this is like the end of Miracle on 54th Street over here. There was a lot of chatter uh, recently. A um, lot of a lot of responses to uh, to the race roundup from from last week. Uh, so we got to get through that some fact checks uh thrown at us as usual so um good lord yeah yeah so, but, so I guess oh, we... but but i did say i was gonna say i did receive one piece of feedback on your marathon recap of of your own reflections which was um a lot of uh, a lot of happiness and excitement about sort of the things that you really enjoyed about the the day and just the experience um yeah and the time is almost beside the point yeah my my race report and and my my reporting in general on those kind of things are mostly emotion. <laughs> just, there's not that much to worry about, you know, time wise numbers splits. You know, put, put the numbers out there for consideration, but they're not the they're not the thing. Which I guess was uh, what this listener enjoyed. No, um, the, the most important thing is this email I got from Tracksmith, the <laughs> running apparel company that said if you set a PR before the end of April 2024. They'll give you like some huge coupon, like a hundred dollar coupon or something. Oh, nice! So you're I, you're you you get that you're eligible. Yeah, I have to do it. I, I I think I'm eligible if I can prove it, and I have and I'm. While I'm sure the LA Marathon Race website is reliable and has all the information I need, I don't have as much confidence in the Providence Marathon. <laughs> so and I haven't looked it up yet. So we'll see. Well, I mean, if they look up other marathons you've done, they probably won't find any except for Providence. Yeah, no, but I mean, to do it, you have to, you have to show your PR and then you have to show that you've, it can't be your first race ever in that distance, you know? Like, oh yeah. So, oh, so, you, so have to, you have to, you have to prove that you, you've done two. Yeah. Um, like, so you can't just run your first marathon ever and run it in nine and a half hours. <laughs> I, I bet it's out there. I think we can do some digging. Um, if, if not, I'm going to email the, the race uh, administrators, the, the race director. Yeah. Um, I'm going to drive to Providence. I'm going to run to Providence. 
let's see uh should, should we jump right into it yeah well i think we should go into weekend running um okay and which is it's been a long week and you and i even saw each other at the beginning of this <laughs> this two week long week and yeah. uh we did not run together unfortunately we did not but um but it was still still good saw saw a lot of listeners it was uh it was a very fun occasion it's true we saw we saw popular runner jim pergolese in person yes um along with a lot of popular runner fans that's true that we were down in in new orleans and i know i know he did go out for i think multiple runs did you make it out for a run down there i did not i i did i did a walk around uh that's about it we celebrate all forms of ambulation it doesn't have to be jim's uh casual 39 mile morning run uh whatever whatever he does <laughs> he he actually ran into the crescent city half or whatever that was going on the he crescent city the actual, classic the, yeah the actual 10K. race 10k yeah so he he accidentally ran into the race and, and everybody that would see him would like try to point him like oh, yeah. no no you've you've got to go that way and uh so he eventually ran in the opposite direction of of the race which was probably a smart move to that avoid I, that i wonder if that confused people even more or if it drove the point home <laughs> like it's yeah he, he's just a solo runner out there he's not part of any race well then our, as far as our personal weeks in running i've I've done a bunch of running since i've been back home though um i, nice. I including a an eight mile very hilly uh treadmill run today and, awesome. uh, and a similar a similar seven miler a couple days ago and on sunday i ran a new york road runners four mile race in um in Central Park Sunday morning and you were fast too right Felt pretty good. pretty good I uh, I was in my head I was like maybe I should try to PR this because um because that'll be easier for me to do document and prove that I PR'd because New York uh, yeah. Roadrunner's website it's so great and it puts it all on one page too and it like says it's your PR and stuff um but the problem is last year I ran a a four mile race in 3159 yeah and i've just been like unable to get that and i was trying i thought i maybe i would and i i don't remember my exact time anymore but i ran like a 32 something but not that close to you yeah know, closer to the other end of, of the 32 than the 3159 so i i didn't do it <laughs> well i wonder if um tracksmith i mean they're probably unlikely to do this but if they if they went Sud sudbury conservation commission style they could just listen to every episode of the power motion picnic hour here how often we've talked about marathons that's true should i just hear, hear the hear the documentation you just submit yeah, just the pod submit the pod submit yeah. episode you know whatever that was providence i'll submit 35 episodes yeah i probably <laughs> yeah, i'll submit everything but you, you can you can get the information you need from episode two and episode you know whatever 30 something but i would recommend listening to all of them yeah they'll know it's a better time than both providence and two or three other marathons you considered running, but DNS. Yeah, I, I mean, that's definitely not a PR. Richmond was not a PR. No. <laughs> and whatever else, I, I that one. Philly. I, Philly, I briefly considered Raleigh. That never happened. Yeah. Yeah, you were going to do Raleigh end of last year, I feel like. Yeah, Ra well, Raleigh and, and Richmond, I think, were the same day. So I was going oh, back yeah. and forth and, and settled on Richmond. Yeah. There's a marathon, like, every day. <laughs> if you want to run a competitive one, it's great. Settled, settled on Richmond as the race you would ultimately not run. To be yeah, I, exactly. I made I made a final decision that I was going to do <laughs> Richmond and then didn't do it. <laughs> well, well it sounds okay. like you had a good good week in running anyway. I had a great week in running. How was your week in running? Yeah, it was okay. Um, kind of got back into a little bit more of a regular routine past few days. So I've been cranking out, you know, four or five mile runs. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to get out for longer. Um, find time for like a, a bit of a longer one that's something i've been missing but um other than that feel pretty good about consistency oh good um, you know versus being sick and just having a couple sort of rough weeks uh no fun running. so i feel like i'm a little bit back on track it's good to yeah just get out there i'm i'm still in my i i subscribe to the you know the one month after a marathon just run for whatever for fun kind of thing yeah so I'm yeah still, i'm still in that first month um Still six days shy of a month since the marathon. So so I'm just kind of doing whatever, which is pretty fun. But that's also just a good idea in general. Just just get out there. Just run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like I've been doing that for a couple months now. Probably need to to start to build more structure. And especially because I'm realizing 
if we're going to do a big run in June still potentially oh, yeah. in the mountains, I'm I am not in very good shape for that right now. I'm I'm probably all right for that, but I I did forget about that. I forget about that every week until we get on pod <laughs> and they get reminded. But I like the idea. And, yeah, uh, I still yeah. think it's worth trying to do. Well, if it's not June, I mean, we can, well, I guess we decided June was the best timing, but um, anyway, more to, more to come on that. Yeah, exactly. Um, more details, be... more promises, and hopefully no, no repeat of Richmond. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess we made a lot of noise with our Barkley coverage. Um, and oh, I guess, yeah? Bar- I guess Barkley got, um, got covered in general, like quite heavily, because uh, I had non-runners sort of like talking to me about jasmine paris's amazing performance her sub 60 hour yeah yeah that's what it, that's what you have to do right subs i'm just yeah. trying to remember because it's been two weeks since we talked about it yeah so anyway yeah a lot of i guess a lot of coverage on barkley in general but um did get a couple fact checks uh, just to rattle off so i think we had mentioned choosing like the the page from the book with your bib number yeah it's actually like i think there's like pages at like books at different waypoints like stashed like throughout the whole course and you have to like kind of keep keep doing it each lap or something so just to okay. be clear that on on that part um the other thing about i guess the barkley is like most of it's just not even on a trail at all um so i guess they're like just running through like briar patches and ridiculous stuff good lord uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you have to reverse direction each lap Huh. Uh, which is another like just confounding factor to just throw people off. Yeah, um, yeah I guess the Briars coverage. Uh, there was a comment maybe could have could have covered the Briars a bit more, but but uh, that that's all sort of constructive. But there's also just a lot of positive. Uh, there was there's a, a lot of delight that we we had picked up on uh, on Barkley. I think I'm I'm glad we picked up on it. It seemed like a big deal in the running world and. Um, I don't necessarily, you'll often come back with news, a race report of some, some kind of ultra run that I've never heard of. But, uh, but this one I was, I was tuned into before we even got into the pod and had already, I think, watched the, you know, her finish, uh, her collapse at the finish line, which is amazing. Yeah. 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 No, it was cool. It was cool that it got so much, uh, sort of broad publicity. Uh, people seem to be into it. I remember some, I don't remember if we discussed this, but some quote she said about the finish and she didn't know whether she was going to make it or not but of course what she made it in like 90 seconds shy of the required time and she said something about how you know she saw the finish and was just like i think she might have used the term like sprinting to the finish and then mm-hmm. got there touched the the finish line and like collapsed and, and then just like was gasping for air and you can see that in the video she's just like on the ground and she's so completely spent but what I love about that is that like what she called like sprinting or whatever she said is like not that fast looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> I, the yeah. I feel like lightning moment. Yeah. And I know that feeling from the from the end of a long race. We're like, I'm going to yeah. sprint to the finish. And then you see a video of it. And you're like that. That's not sprinting. <laughs> it's, well, it's not the feeling of going fast. It's the feeling of like spending like all of your energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even it's if, not even if that doesn't amount to much speed. And I, I wonder, I've seen it, like I saw a video of, of me doing that at the end of the Providence Marathon. And that one's funny because I did feel like I was really booking it, you know, like I, I, <laughs> I felt like Michael Johnson out there or something. And then I saw, yeah. the, saw the video and I looked like I was going for like a, a nice ginger, gingerly jog, you know, like trying just to just be moving. Um, yeah. But then I was thinking about that when I finished my four mile race this past Sunday. Same thing. Like if you have something in the tank, I always try to run pretty hard to the finish, you know, shave off a couple seconds and mm-hmm. uh, especially trying to PR. But then I wondered, and it's four miles. So maybe at four miles, I still looked like I was running fast, but maybe I didn't. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even I, I feel like most, most times when I see my, see myself running, I feel like I, I feel faster than I, than I look. It feels so fast. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about, there's a video that, I don't remember if we shared this or not on our Instagram, but when we did the community mile, there's a video of you and me uh, in our head to head mile race. And I, you know, when I'm just two seconds behind you and I remember the feeling of just like running so hard <laughs> to, tr- to try, I mean, to try to catch you and pass you, but, but just to what I was, all I was basically doing was just for the last probably hundred, hundred meters was just keeping the same distance behind you. But I was yeah. running because you were running equally hard, I guess, but 
I was running as hard as I could. <laughs> and when I saw the video, it didn't look like somebody running that no, hard. <laughs> I remember seeing us and it looks like we're kind of like just jogging along. It's like, no, we were spending it at that point. Felt like Jasmine Paris, like at the time. Yeah, yeah. But um, um oh, and the last thing I, I love this. Um at at Barkley, when somebody like taps out, when somebody stops racing, they they play um literally taps on on like a on a on like a horn uh so like when somebody's out you and like you can like sort of you know it's broadcast a bit so like That's people great. out out on the race like will suddenly like just hear the horn going it's like oh man somebody somebody so, else is out i don't know does that does that encourage you to keep going or does that make you want to quit i wonder i don't know i i i mean i'd like it i i think i'd like to have a song played on a on a trumpet or whatever when when i finish running at some point yeah sure it's nice to know someone's paying attention i suppose yeah um all this all this talk about uh you know races and race directing makes me think are we going to do the community mile again this year is that an annual event uh i don't know yeah i guess we can put it out there we can do another community mile we could come up with another another concept um who knows what we're going to do yeah it's true I like how unpredictable we are yeah. <laughs> and how unclear we're being. We, we, yeah, we could, I guess the question's out there now and maybe we could leave it to the mailbag. Should we do another community mile? Should we do a different race? If so, anyone, does anyone have any suggestions? Yeah. Distance, you know, location, style, whatever. Yeah. Also, you know, method of judgment. We Last year we did enjoyment and whether you could beat a, a Tom Bosworth world record walking mile of yeah what was it five minute 37 seconds yep yep which nobody nobody beat i know tom has has shifted his focus to running yeah so i wonder what maybe we could look up what his uh his best mile time is and maybe even adjust to that yeah i think he's well he's certainly run faster than his mile time uh but i think he's now doing like longer distances too like trying uh -huh. to run faster than like a walking 10k oh uh, that kind of stuff interesting well we could always have a community 10k although i like how accessible our our distance is so that is a really good thing about the mile yeah could go even shorter but <laughs> <laughs> community choose your own distance but i think um, if we remember back to last summer i think to me one of the appeals of the mile and this is what got us talking about it, i think is when you're a kid they're always making you run the mile yeah in gym, in gym class and no one makes I mean, you run the mile anymore i'm fully in favor of of the community mile again i feel like yeah. it's really good it's a it's a good format it's worth we can't just do it just once i think people, right. people want more let's do it again yeah we, we could consider community mile we could consider changing the physical location but the the event yeah all right let's throw in, yeah. throw in some different different elements maybe for um the power motion picnic hour presents the krampus classic um we did a we did a, a voting system, popular vote, uh, oh, yeah. determine, determine the winner uh, of that particular race. Um, that doesn't work quite as well with something like Community Mile, because the thing about that is everybody was physically in the same location. So you could do a quick sort of people sort of like uh, stood and sort of like made their case for who they thought should be the winner and then sort of went around in the circle. And then there was a vote and then uh, Alpine won uh, just like that. I like the drama. It's like the Academy Awards. Yeah. I yeah. wonder with, with how um, self-referential this show has gotten, <laughs> what would this episode sound like to a first time listener who, who didn't start at the, our pilot and started with this one? I don't know. Are you <laughs> suggesting we should be less self-referential or, or no. more context, more context? No. Yeah. Neither. Okay. I was just, I was just pondering. I like the format. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I guess that brings us to another mailbag. And this was this is a particularly helpful mailbag for that new listener because uh, the listener writes and references episode 3.2. Oh. Uh, no wrong way. And says this this response was requested apparently by me, Trevor, in <laughs> episode 3.2 mailbag section. It is a link to what is described as a brand of regional stoner rock you can listen to while making sense of Trevor's advice about running mostly downhill. Okay. Um, 
And he says, with more downhill, don't you always just end up at the bottom? I think I think this listener might be missing the fact that, like, yes, you also have to walk to the top of whatever you run down. I'm not even sure I understand what we're talking about. In a, in a downhill <laughs> scenario. We're talking about, like, how you mean, like, how, like, something like the LA Marathon is a net downhill and the Boston Marathon is a net downhill? How about something um, like that? We well, we had a we talked about marathon training and and the idea of specifically sort of like do you do you work on downhill because um, that could be an area of weakness in in races. Mm. Um, and so I guess it was re- in response to that. I see. Um, this is some regional stoner rock from, and listener says question mark Brazil. Um, upon some investigation, they're actually from Argentina. Well, I love black, black sky giant. All right. I love this mailbag entry. I barely understand it. It's great. <laughs> I don't think I understand it at all, actually, but that's fine. Uh, well, I guess it's another introduction to the segment of deciphering listener Dan's mailbag yeah. over the next several weeks. That's who I thought it was from. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I say that just because he, he has sent in a lot of mailbag entries. So I've, I've become fluent, not in meaning, but in uh, <laughs> in understanding the source, I guess. Most, both, most of his mailbag, as well as most of our regional stoner rock related mailbag, um, both, or, you know, it, it's all sourced from listener Dan primarily. Like, yeah. If, like well, if I hear in, bo- in both categories, if I hear a mailbag question about stoner rock, particularly, <laughs> particularly if it's, it's about the regionalization of stoner rock. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I know who it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah um it's funny well when we were together not running um <laughs> like a week and a half ago i think i i did get a lot of in-person mailbag from when we were when we were out there just touching the public and, and kissing babies and yeah and, yeah and saying hi to listeners um i got a lot of in-person mailbag and i think i've forgotten all of it because <laughs> <laughs> we were you know we were we were in new orleans and yeah and we yeah. were we were drinking heineken there was there, there was a lot of in person mailbag. There was a lot of like yeah, um, a lot of interesting connections between listeners and uh, you know what you might call uh, characters on on the pod. Yeah, um, who turn out to be like real people, like popular runner Jim Pergolesi, um, who by the way we we gave a report on Devil Shadow last yeah. week um, conditions report uh, and upon further investigation found that popular runner came in first place in the fortissimo division wow fourth place overall that's pretty amazing congratulations congratulations popular runner and uh most frequent guest on this show although it's a tie so yeah so we we applaud you uh for your efforts and contribution (laughs) to the the running community and the achievements of fortissimo runners yeah yeah well well done yeah um that might be it for the race roundup i mean it was a it was a doozy i'll tell you that much Um, good lord i had a i have an update but it's not a mailbag but i did um i did have a a run-in with a former special guest um popular roller popular roller derby skater and popular skeptic about running um (laughs) (laughs) running agnostic Susie hot rod yeah and uh she has been running. That's an update for the audience. And because she was, she was training for, what was that thing she was training for? She was training for some event where she has to run a kilometer and then do some kind of exercise and then run another uh, kilometer. Yeah. I, I don't know. Can't remember what it's called, but so she's been running. And so that that's our first update, but then she needs help. And so I said, I would reach out to our listening audience um, and see if anyone could help her. And she's having IT band issues. Ooh. Okay. And so I think she, I'm sure she knows some of the basics. I know she's been doing some stretching and I think she's been doing the thing with the, you know, the, the roller thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you roll on the thing sideways. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of both, us runners are, are familiar with that. Both good things. I think, um, cause I've had some IT band issues. I'd say, I'd say slow it down probably would be my first piece of advice. Just, yeah. just go, go, go really slow. Yeah. I think the thing that helped me now that I'm thinking about it the most was uh, changing my footwear. Ooh, that's a good call too. Yeah. Um, Especially if she's running in sort of some older, older, you know, sneakers and 
uh, maybe with a lot of miles. Yeah, we we both went through that too. That's right. Right. You might not know about that. So I'll I'll mention slowing it down. I'll mention sneakers, and then uh, I'll I'll mention to her anything we get in our mailbag. Because as I told her, most of what I know about running and I learn from our listeners when they they tell me to do things, and it's it's helped. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're very, very knowledgeable. More um, knowledgeable than us. So, <laughs> yeah, by far, by yeah. far. Um, um, okay, good. Well, I'm glad we got that out there in the world, and I can't wait to uh, see what we hear back once again. Uh, you know, call call Dave Rawlings on his uh, <laughs> unlisted phone number and tell him the advice for Susie, and he'll get it to us. I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We had one final mailbag. Can check that off. Okay. Um, so this was a recommendation, I think. Uh, or at least just an FYI. Okay. Um, so you can apparently uh, rollerblade the the Berlin Marathon. If you do it in less than two and a half mile uh, hours, you get an automatic entry into the the following year. So that's yeah, pretty. So you have to do you have to do the course, I guess. I don't know what that entails, like going and doing the course when it's not because you can't obviously can't no. do that during the race. So you probably shouldn't, right? Get in people's way. Seems kind of dangerous, I'd imagine. So how do they, yeah, how do they track that? Do you do it on, you have to do it on like Strava or something? GPS, yeah, GPS file. You have Watch. to do it, what's what's the time you have to complete it in? Two and a half hours. Two and a half, that seems pretty fast. It seems, it seems like one of those things that if it was too easy, they probably wouldn't have it set up like that. But this is, yeah, this is a good idea. And um and I think it's a good assignment for us to give to female gear shed testing correspondent. Um, yeah and she is also a roller derby skater and i, I think I, I think that'd be awesome and yes i mean she hasn't reviewed any gear in a while <laughs> so why not uh instead of reviewing gear you could have a review of a non-traditional race qualification method yeah perfect it seems dangerous to me i mean i don't know the berlin course at all um but i imagine it goes through the city a bit right yeah if it's and, not closed off for running wouldn't that be a bit difficult yeah, that, and you know, I haven't been to Berlin in over twenty years, uh, <laughs> so, so my memory's a little hazy. But I gotta think it's not the smoothest ground, like to yeah. be skating on. Well, maybe the skates will come in handy over the blades in that case. Um, roller skates instead of roller blades. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I have very little experience roller skating, but I find street skating and roller skates to be incredibly difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's something i did a little bit early during the, the pandemic the, prior the, prior to a roller skating related injury before yeah before roller skating into a stop sign and <laughs> thinking i broke my ribs <laughs> uh oh man that was fun those days also that, that was a good old day that was like four years ago i guess uh, probably ex four years ago today actually that's why we're recording and talking about it yeah yeah okay well we'll look into this and see how uh see how we can do and get her out there and then and yeah i'll see it. i'll we'll reach out to bobos maybe for some funding see if they're interested we haven't we haven't asked them for money in a long time that's right yeah they're probably wondering where we went or did we forget um they're the probably worried about us the yeah. answers no we're still here <laughs> we're still here uh we're definitely still here we had a i think we had a, a busy off pod last few months um, but we're about to get busy on pod. I know we've got a lot of guests lined up starting starting next week, I think. I think so. Yeah, we got a couple guests to look forward to. We got some big, big races. Uh, we won't have to milk the same race roundup for two weeks again. I think we can just talk about you know Boston, uh, which That's is next right. Monday. We're, oh, we're, record, we're recording this on a on a Thursday. Uh, this upcoming Monday is Boston. That's true. Yeah. I was just informed because I, I work, I work remotely out of a company based in Boston and I was just informed that we're, we have the day off on Monday and I completely, nice. I've completely forgot Patriots day. Yeah. I took the day off. I'm going to go, um, bring the family down an affiliated member of the house, uh, who does this not affiliated with the power motion picnic hour, the two young apprentices. We're going to go <laughs> down, uh, Oh, at least watch the uh, the wheelchair portion. They go off first because you're pretty um, close to the start. Um, kind of, yeah. I guess we're, yeah. I don't know how, how like what percentage in, but um, we'll probably go to Natick to watch. Okay, all right. Yeah, I love watching. Um, I love watching that part on TV because, like, <laughs> when you, when you watch, like, you know, whatever, 
the the first really for a while maybe everything before they get to wellesley almost it's just like they're just running through like a pretty what do you like sparsely populated neighborhood at like you know yeah right eight in the morning so there's not that many people out there yeah. um they're just running or, or wheeling by a dunkin donuts <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, and there's nobody outside that. And then there's like then there's like three people with a sign, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then they then they then they go by some just there's no one then. And it's great. I, <laughs> I love that. It's so fun. It but as someone who used to live in the city of Boston, you know, when you get into the city, it's totally crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't go right by where where we live, but like the closest places we could drive to to see it are I'm guessing they're probably like somewhere around about halfway. So we're not quite in that. Oh, that okay. early part. But um, like if we go to Natick, sort of the downtown Natick, like, you know, decent gathering usually of people. Uh, OK, train people on. We go to the fire station down there. It's yeah, it's nice. That is nice. Yeah, I feel like I can picture that fire station. I feel like it's in the background when I picture last year's Boston. And what was her name? Who won the, the female uh, wheelchair division and um, pulled over to like screwdriver out her fix her wheel? Yeah, Sue Sue Scaroni. That was amazing. And she, she I love that. Still one of my all time favorite post race interviews. Where yeah. She she was just she won the Boston Marathon and she was like upset because <laughs> she didn't get it like a time she was going for and it. it kind of went wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. Well, that sounds um, like that sounds like a nice place to watch. I used to, I used to love. I lived for many years in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and I used to love watching the New York Marathon there. Yeah. And I lived just like two blocks from the from the route right around, I don't know, 10 miles maybe. And I used to love just like waking up and stumbling over to Peter Pan donuts and getting a donut and a coffee mm -hmm. and just getting there just in time before the, the lead pack showed up and, and watching them fly, fly up Manhattan Avenue and Greenpoint. It was pretty thrilling. Yeah. 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 And in my sort of younger, younger days, pre Fortissimo by a lot, um, maybe even half Fortissimo uh, ish, um i remember like going down by like fenway area like, like oh, yeah. brookline and like com ave and all that and down there it's just a party like because they've got all the you know bu and the schools and it's just like a place where a lot of young people live and all like a lot of the uh you know brownstones the apartment buildings will have like a little yard in front and there's people just out there just like partying having a blast partying <laughs> like watching watching people do this you know uh you know massive physical exertion they're just hanging out in their lawn chairs i love it barbecuing and <laughs> that's what that's what brooklyn's like too yeah yeah Sim similar vibe you, know, you go through north brooklyn and everybody's just partying with the, the race going by and i don't remember how long boston goes by for new york it just goes forever <laughs> it's it, yeah there's there's this one section on um so we've talked and we've covered a little bit of uh and, and had some special guests who have run Ultra Trail Mont Blanc, the UTMB race um, that goes around uh, Mont Blanc through like, I think it's like France, Italy, and Germany maybe or something. Uh, France, Italy. Anyway, yeah. Um, so through one section of like an aid station, like in the that a lot of the like top runners run through at like the middle of the night, they end up having like this like whole like rave scene there. There's people just like with their like glow sticks, just like going That's nuts, great. like dancing and like the runners come through, like after just being in the woods, like in the mountains, <laughs> like and they run like, you know, a ridiculous amount of time. And then all of a sudden there's just like this rave going on in the middle of it. There's just European party animals. Yeah. Listening yeah. to listening to Paul Oakenfold. To me, that seems a little like jarring but uh i guess if i guess if you're like a professional elite runner like you're you're kind of used to that maybe yeah yeah for me i mean for me it would be fine i think back to la when at 22 miles or whatever it is when someone was trying to hand me beer yeah yeah <laughs> i was like no <laughs> no not not right now i don't want beer to run oh. I have four miles to, or more that was probably 21 miles yeah that was very early we should if, have asked uh special guest katie scheid who who won utmb um about that well about, maybe we'll maybe about we'll the rave mailbag. yeah let's let's yeah, outbound about the mailbagger. Rave. hey like what'd you think about the rave let's outbound mailbagger and and let's uh let's see if she's going to our our college's reunion this year yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little off topic but since we're in the outbound mailbag yeah by the way yeah. yeah hey just wondering 
wondering yeah we, we did all go to the same school yep yep okay uh, well let's see so what else we, we we don't have that much time so if there's anything else we should try to squeeze it in now um i mean we've, we've covered so much uh i feel like the listeners are going to walk away just enlightened uh by this conversation running out of pages in their notebook to keep writing notes on (laughs) for for the topics we've covered one thing i meant to have us do this week that we didn't do was to bring back song of the week (laughs) song of the week yeah remember song of the week remember those days i do uh i think actually we had discussed doing album of the week with uh with black sky giant the listener mailbag first ever album of the week um i did run to it actually Uh, yeah yeah, so maybe, you know, you can do that or or just recommend a song. We'll go song of the week. I was, you know, last night I put on an album and I put on the album uh, Who Will Cut Our Hair When We're Gone by the Unicorns from, oh, nice. from 2003. And I said, you know, and I said, you know, this was my and Trevor's favorite album uh, <laughs> during our last season of the original Power Motion Picnic Hour, the, the terrestrial college indie rock radio show and i i think that was true i think i'm speaking for both of us yeah yeah we we both were pretty into that album heavily into unicorns at that point yeah so maybe i could i'll try to uh edit some unicorns in because i bet you most people don't know what they sound like i i i can i can hear it now what do you which song you have in your head um right now jelly bones ah that's probably the best song on the record yeah it's a good one all right well we'll edit it we'll edit it in a bit we'll edit in some jelly bones yeah we'll we'll post it on our um official playlist of uh the popular running podcast the power motion picnic hour oh yeah i've never available on spotify i've never (laughs) yeah yeah and one day maybe somewhere else as well who knows yeah um I, I've I've never tried running to the unicorns. It feels like that would be very funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes it's just about you know getting a vibe. I woke him up, broke the news after everything was so. Said soon you've got a full blown case of what is now. My gym run sessions recently. I've been running to a lot, a lot more podcasts, a lot less music. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I can. I have a hard time with that on the tread, but I'll do podcasts outside. Interesting. Actually, well, I did a podcast on the tread today. It was fine. Oh yeah, well, can you name the podcast? I, I can't even remember what I listen to anymore. Uh, some work, all play. Oh. Other pop, other uh, other runners. Oh, whoa, um, I didn't, didn't maybe even a future. Could... Maybe future special guests. All right. It's out there in the universe now. So if you're listening, hosts of whatever podcast Trevor just named that I've never heard of, <laughs> uh, reach out to our friend and yours, Dave Rawlings, and he'll book you on the show and we'll we'll figure out how to how to, you know, zoom you in. Um but that being said, until next time. Onward. Special guest, gingerly jog. This is the power.